Work is a necessary part of life to be able to afford what we need. But there are some careers where people subject themselves to unimaginable risks. Prepare to feel queasy and have your limits challenged. We look at the 15 most scary jobs in the world. Number 15. Light Bulb Changer Ever since light bulbs were patented by Edison in 1879, they've become an intrinsic part of modern life. Along with their ability to have light even when it's dark outside, there's one thing that their use inevitably leads to – the occasional need to change them once they've burned out. It's something we all do and is a relatively minor thing to do around the house, but there are some people whose main job is to change light bulbs, and instead of being a simple procedure, most would regard it as being one of the scariest jobs on Earth. That's because virtually every tall structure that's built has to have a light on top of it as a warning to aircraft that they need to stay clear. This includes every radio tower, and it's the job of technicians to climb to the top to change the bulbs whenever they've blown. This involves strapping yourself into a harness and often climbing as high as 2,000 feet or even more. It's not just the extreme heights they have to contend with, but also the rapidly changing weather and can often find themselves exposed at the top with gale force winds blowing around them. With only a harness and a clip to keep you safe, you really have to have a head for heights and faith in your equipment to even consider this as a career path. It requires extensive training and experience before you're in charge of a jet yourself, but a job like that is easy mode compared to what other pilots have to deal with. In some parts of the world, communities live in such remote regions that the only way they can receive the supplies they need is by air, and this is where bush pilots come in. They are, in many places, the lifelines that allow people to survive and fly small aircraft through challenging and difficult terrain. They have to be expert pilots, and a little crazy too, because quite often they're required to land in the middle of jungles, on the sides of mountains, or on ice sheets, all without having a prepared landing strip or runway. To make things easier, the planes are usually fitted with larger tires, floats, or skis to allow them to land on any available surface, but it's still an extremely nerve-wracking experience. There are many occasions where bush pilots can't delay flights because of storms or high wind, such as when they're delivering vital medical supplies or need to evacuate people in trouble, so they're far more likely to face challenging conditions than commercial jets ever will. They do this for relatively little pay and at great risk to their own safety, but without them, entire communities would be forced to relocate away from their historical homes. Milker Farmers around the world regularly milk a wide range of species, usually for human consumption. And it's such a tried and tested process that there's nothing frightening about it at all. There is one creature that needs to be milked that poses a serious threat, however, and only expert handlers can even think of trying it. Snakes are some of the most beautiful, but also potentially the deadliest animals on the planet. Apart from being collected as pets, they also provided a huge benefit to medical research because virtually every species with venom contains its own unique blend of toxins that, when combined, can be deadly, but when isolated can help develop new treatments. Some toxins have helped with blood pressure, strokes, and the treatment of certain cancers, and it's also important to acquire snake venom to help develop anti-venoms for anyone who's unfortunate enough to be bitten. But how do you collect the venom itself? The answer is you have to milk the snakes. That's a highly dangerous job where one wrong move can spell disaster. Any snake that injects venom with fangs can be milked, but the most common species are cobras, mambas, vipers, corals, copperheads, crates, and rattlesnakes. The process itself is quite simple and involves opening the snake's mouth and puncturing a collection vessel with the fangs so the venom squirts out. Every attempt is, of course, made to ensure it's as safe as possible but you have to have a deep understanding of the behavior of snakes and how to react if things don't go to plan. Otherwise, you could find yourself on the receiving end of a fatal dose. Number 10. Bomb Squad Bombs are some of the most dangerous weapons to have ever been invented and are indiscriminate in the damage, death, and destruction that they can cause. With so many different designs for explosive devices, once one is set, you can never quite be sure if it'll be possible to deactivate it in time. Whenever a bomb is found, a perimeter has to be evacuated, and the first responders have no choice but to stand back and hope it doesn't detonate before the specialist bomb disposal squad arrives. These are highly skilled personnel who know about the different principles upon which bombs are built and are responsible for assessing the device and hopefully preventing it from fulfilling its purpose. 
While they wear protective equipment that should save their lives if the worst happens, there's such a huge amount of risk involved with disarming an explosive, and it requires such intricate work that they aren't able to protect their hands. New technologies such as robots and scanners are making the role a lot safer than it once was, but it's still common for several bomb disposal operatives to die in the line of duty each year around the world. It remains one of the most dangerous and scary jobs that anyone can have. Number 9. Rodeo Clown Rodeos are events that are popular in various countries around the world, where people put their safety on the line to attempt to ride on the backs of bulls for as long as possible. The animal do all they can to throw the rider off their back, but once they have done, they are rarely finished. They tend to then try to attack anyone that's around them, and it's the job of the rodeo clown to distract the bull while the rider is removed from the arena to safety, and to provide entertainment to the crowd before the next rider begins. Rodeo clowns need to be quick on their feet, and experts at handling bulls, but no matter how much they've prepared, they're still risking their lives to protect the fallen riders. While they try to anticipate the moves of the bull, the wild animals are inherently unpredictable, and it's quite common for clowns to be seriously injured and occasionally be killed. It requires incredible bravery and an element of recklessness to work as a rodeo clown, especially as the event is solely held to entertain others and even though those who do it take the danger and fear in their stride, it's certainly scary watching them while they work. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Cryonics Technician Humans have an innate desire to live as long as possible. But while most of us have come to terms with the fact that one day our lives will end, there are those who will go to extreme lengths to live as long as possible. Whether it be old age or a serious illness that cannot be cured, it's quite possible that future technologies will be developed that can stave off our ultimate demise, and that's where the idea of cryonics was born. The basic concept is that following death or soon before, people's bodies or even just their heads are frozen to temperatures of around negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit in the hope that one day they can be thawed, brought back to life, and healed from whatever ailment they suffered from. It's definitely fringe science, with no evidence that could ever be successful, but that doesn't stop those who are convinced by it, and can afford it, from arranging for their remains to be treated in that way. Of course, for the bodies to be frozen, someone has to prepare them for the cryonic chambers and oversee the facility to ensure everything is functioning correctly. It's the job of cryonics technicians to do this, and they spend their working days severing heads to be frozen, submerging dead bodies into a precise cocktail of sub-zero substances, and monitoring it all. If there's ever a job that'll give you creeps at night once you're at home, then it's surely this one. And being surrounded by huge facilities full of frozen people must be one of the scariest places you could be. Number 7. Clinical Trial Subject one of the main reasons that we now live far longer than our ancestors is the incredible improvements in our understanding of the human body and medical progress in the past century. Most illnesses that would have once been fatal can now be treated with a range of new drugs and treatments, but the development of these new methods is a tricky process, and it takes a great deal of research and innovation to come up with a new vaccine or treatment protocol. While in theory they may work, nothing can be certain until they have actually been tested on actual people and this is when companies hire clinical trial subjects. On the face of it, it's an easy job. You'll often be under constant observation and paid well for your time. But with only 10% of drugs that enter human trials actually reaching the stage where they become approved, there's a large number that cause unexpected side effects, some of which can be extremely painful and even deadly. It's a necessary role, but one that's fraught with risk, and every potential clinical trial subject has to be made aware of what they might be signing up to before the trial can begin. Test of a drug in 2006, for example, resulted in extreme swelling in all participants, with consequences that they still live with to this day. It means that, with so many unknowns, this has to be one of the scariest jobs on Earth. Number 6. Miner For many thousands of years, humans have dug deep tunnels into the Earth in order to extract valuable metals and substances. But no matter how much technology has improved, there is still a real and present danger involved with mining underground. It remains one of the riskiest jobs that anyone can ever have, and in many places it's impossible for a miner to get health insurance or be looked after if they suffer an injury or long-term health consequences as a result of their career. 
There are just so many unknowns, such as lethal gases that can be released, the threat of tunnels collapsing, or even suffering injuries so far underground that it's impossible to bring you back to the surface in time to be treated. The worst mining disaster in history, for example, took place in 1942, when a fire began in a coal mine in Japan. To try to quell the flames, the ventilation system was switched off, but more than 1,500 people died as a result. You might think that incidents like this are less common now, but in the past decade there have been at least six major disasters in mines around the world, which when combined resulted in the deaths of more than 500 people. Simply knowing the risks they are taking every time they enter a mine, miners face an extremely scary job. Number 5. Smoke Jumper Wildfires can be lethal and cause hundreds of millions of dollars worth of damage around the world each year. They usually start after periods of prolonged hot and dry weather and can be triggered by anything from natural causes to a misplaced cigarette. Once one has taken hold, fire crews do everything they can to minimize the impact, from digging trenches in the path of the flames to dousing the fires with billions of gallons of water. When the winds pick up, however, fires can spread throughout forests at unbelievable speeds, and it can prove to be difficult just to get ahead of one, let alone take steps to prevent its spread. Crews have a secret weapon in these situations, though. Fire jumpers. These are elite firefighters who provide the initial response to an approaching fire, and to get ahead of it, they're dropped by parachute at designated coordinates. They usually receive a support drop, which provides them with the tools, equipment, and supplies to survive for at least 48 hours in hostile environments, and they get to work with organizing locals and doing what they can to prevent the fire's approach. It's incredibly risky jumping from a plane above a fire, let alone committing to landing ahead of it in a region that could potentially be turned to dust within a few days. Amazingly, however, fatalities are very rare, but this is more because they're so expertly trained in the first place. Number 4. Field Epidemiologist Despite medicine having progressed leaps and bounds in recent decades, it still requires a huge amount of research and study to ensure that diseases continue to be managed and effectively combated. Despite as many precautions being taken worldwide as possible, occasionally new diseases or ones thought long gone appear in populations, and it's imperative for the safety of everyone in the world that we quickly understand the threat and develop ways to counteract it. The first response to an emerging medical threat is conducted by field epidemiologists. These are experts in their fields, and the one who takes samples and monitor the first groups of people who fall victim to a new illness. They're often called in to deal with outbreaks of influenza, Ebola, and malaria, and it's their tireless work that prevents these diseases from spreading further than they do. There's an inherent risk in this work, however, because these doctors could quite well contract the disease that they've been sent to study. In the Ebola outbreak in West Africa in 2014, at least 300 doctors from elsewhere in the world died after contracting it themselves while investigating it. Number 3. War Correspondent The moment humans developed the first primitive weapons for hunting, they've also used them to turn on each other, and wars have been waged around the world ever since. There's never been a time where there hasn't been fighting taking place somewhere on the planet and historically, people in most countries wouldn't even have necessarily known about it. But fortunately, news organizations have increasingly been able to report on what's going on. To gather the information, however, requires the work of war correspondents, who travel to the front lines of battles to document the events that take place. It's an incredibly vital role that means that governments are held to account more than ever before, and hopefully has the effect of reducing the number of conflicts that begin in the first place. The man credited with being the first was William Howard Russell, who reported on the Crimean War for the Times newspaper in the 1850s, but in many ways it's still as dangerous now as it was then. Correspondents are unfortunately occasionally killed while reporting, and it's undoubtedly the most risky career path in journalism. No matter how many precautions are taken, it can never be fully safe and must be truly frightening when a battle rages around them. Number 2. Stunt Pilot when the Wright brothers flew the first airplane in December of 1903, they couldn't have imagined how much their invention was going to change the world. From fighter aircraft to passenger jets, it was one of the most important discoveries of the 20th century, but also one of the most entertaining. Planes don't have to be used purely for functional purposes, and expert pilots are able to conduct maneuvers you wouldn't expect to see in a normal flight, solely to perform for spectators. It's not just planes either, as aerobatics can be done with helicopters, and a thriving industry has developed around the world where millions of people visit air shows each year. 
but pilots do, however, push their aircraft to the extremes. They're exerted to huge G-forces and often need to make such precise movements that one wrong move will end in tragedy. This isn't just a perceived risk, it's an absolute reality, and on average there have been at least six or seven fatal incidents involving stunt displays every year over the past two decades. Still, despite facing this risk, pilots still put on their flight suits and put on increasingly challenging displays for crowds, and will continue to do so for many years to come. Number 1. Window Cleaner At more than half a mile tall, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is currently the world's highest building. But did you ever wonder how they keep all of the windows so clean? Amazingly, the building has 24,348 panes of glass on its exterior, which is the equivalent of 1.29 million square feet. And apart from the very top piers, all the rest are cleaned by hand. It takes a crew of 36 full-time workers three or four months to complete, and by the time they finish, they have to start all over again. Not only is it monotonous work, but it also involves dangling off the side of the tallest structure on Earth. They begin by climbing to the spire on the inside of the building, and then abseiling on ropes where they clean the windows all the way to the ground, then climb up again. This requires the use of special high-tension ropes, which are apparently safe to use even when winds reach speeds of up to 23 miles an hour, although they stop working at lower wind speeds to prevent the water sloshing from their buckets. If you have a head for heights, then maybe this job doesn't seem frightening at all. But for most people in the world, this would undoubtedly be a step too far. Watch our scary playlist for more top 15 videos about the most scary subjects. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best videos.